Hi, I'm Amelia. I had SM from when I was three until I was 10 years old. I am a 15 year old high school sophomore studying biomedical sciences, and I'm a member of Girl Scouts, enjoy taking part in volunteer opportunities in my community. I dance competitively, competitively and am involved in dozens of school service and academic clubs, as well as my school's theater organization, where I am prop manager for stage crew. I also volunteered with the Selective Mutism Association and a part of the writing team for the forthcoming publication, The Selective Mutism Workbook for Parents and Professionals, Small Steps, Big Changes. My advice for those who are still trying to overcome SM is to join clubs, teams, programs, and camps where you can meet others and get to know them. It is important to find a friend. There will always be someone out there willing to be your friend, and you just have to find them. It is my pleasure to be talking to Maggie Johnson today. Maggie is the co-author of the internationally acclaimed Selective Mutism Resource Manual in the book I just mentioned, The Selective Mutism Workbook for Parents and Professionals, Small Steps, Big Changes. She's a speech and language therapist specializing in childhood communication disorders and selective mutism and the associated impacts on family, schools, and young people themselves. Maggie leads training days and workshops across the UK and abroad. In 2014, she was awarded a fellowship of the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists in recognition of her clinical expertise and special contribution to the profession. Maggie, your book, The Selective Mutism Resource Manual, is widely known as the Bible for Treating Selective Mutism. And over the years, it has helped countless children who have SM and their families worldwide. Could you please tell us why you wrote a companion workbook and which audience the new book was written for? Oh, hi, Amelia. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I have to be honest. It took me quite a while to realise that this extra workbook was needed. I'd hoped that the second edition of the manual would be enough because it now included what we call the 24-7 approach. And that's lots of uh, very simple, informal strategies that families and teaching staff can use on a day-to-day basis, just as part of their everyday routine interactions with children. But what I was finding was that It was only after teachers or classroom assistants and parents had attended one of my training courses or come to um, one of my support groups, it was only then that they felt really confident to use the manual. So that is where the workbook comes in. And I can completely see why they weren't feeling you know confident with the manual this is the reason I don't know if you can see this I ha- it is so heavy it's massive the manual um plus there's another 244 pages just in the on online resource library you can download all these you know these are printable advice sheets so you know, you're not going to be able to wade through all of that to quickly get to the bit that is just for your child. Alison and I have always called it a resource manual, and that is what it is. Um, it covers all ages from toddlers to adults, and it, it doesn't just look at SM, but uh, when there is bilingualism or additional diagnoses such as autism and communication disorders, It covers all of that. And the idea is that you dip into it and you take what you need from it. So the manual is ideal for teachers and practitioners who are supporting several children with varying needs. And and it's, you know, fair enough. It is ideal for parents um, and other people who are supporting older children or young people with very long-standing SM because that's when the informal day-to-day strategies might not be enough. You cannot just give this to a grandparent um, or a teacher and expect them to quickly swat up on SM before they next see a child. You'd need to know exactly which handouts to give them and which bits to read. And, you know, naturally, every parent of a child with SM is most interested in their child. They don't want to have to wade through all of that stuff that's about other people's children. So, yeah, hopefully the workbook will change all of that. The the audience for the workbook is anyone supporting a child who has SM. But the point is, 
they will just be supporting one child and they want to quickly access any material that applies to them and they want to put it into practice immediately. The workbook will become their personal record of how that child is doing, uh, what they need to do next and how to involve other people along the way so that you have this totally united, consistent approach. Thank you, Maggie, for this information. Can you please tell us more about the difference between manual between the manual and the workbook? Sure. Well, as I've already said, um, the resource manual's got a lot of in-depth information about the rationale of SM treatment, and it covers a general population. But, but the workbook is just for one child, and it won't hold you up with any more background information than you need. I mean, obviously, you can go to the manual for more information if you'd like to. All the references are signposted in the workbook, but that is completely optional. With the workbook, you can get straight on with taking steps to help a child overcome their SM. And as the title of the work uh, of the work um, book suggests, um, small steps, big changes. It is all about taking these small, manageable steps to gradually overcome SM. And in the manual, the only really detailed breakdown into small steps is reserved um, for the more formal small steps programs. Now, not every child needs a small steps program. In the workbook, we do the same. We do this really detailed breakdown into small steps. We do the same with very informal strategies and techniques. So parents and other adults, they won't have to work out how to apply the strategies in here to their own child in a real situation. We've done that work for you. So each worksheet, um, it breaks an activity down into detailed steps so you know where you're going and what to aim for. Now, I think that's really important. You know exactly what to aim for because this will make sure you don't stop too early. That's what's been happening, particularly in schools. They see the, the child make a lot of progress very quickly and they're so excited and over the moon and they then assume that the child will now just carry on making that progress. But with SM, that's not how it works. That child has got to generalize their progress to other people, other situations. So yeah, I really think that this workbook um, is going to help to maintain focus and keep the momentum going. Um, if we don't do that, the, the SM take, actually takes a lot longer to overcome than it needs to. Um, but I think the main difference is that each worksheet in the workbook, and there's, oh, let me see if I can remember this, it's something like 15 strategies and 42 activities, something like that. So it's a lot of worksheets. Um, but each of those worksheets, it stands alone. Now, with the manual, you couldn't use a technique that you'd read about in chapter nine or 10 unless you'd digested the earlier chapters. With the workbook, it's just so much simpler. You decide what to work on. Um, you identify your own priorities. And then each single worksheet that you take and decide, right, that's what we really need to work on. Each worksheet is going to pull together all the practical advice around that issue from the entire manual, pulls it all into one place. Plus, it's going to bring in all the relevant advice from the online resources. So that means you've got all the necessary groundwork and all that stuff about building resilience and general anxiety management all that kind of critical thinking that parents need to do about what effect their behaviour is having on the children, all of that is in one place. So in theory, nothing will get overlooked and, uh, and I hope progress is going to be um, faster for many people. And 
the last difference I can think of um, is down to the way that we wrote it. Um, with the manual, we relied um, a great deal. I can't work in any other way, I have to say, but we relied a great deal on the feedback and ideas and suggestions that we got from families, staff, children and adults who had SM. But these were all people in the UK. Now, with this project, it's just been this amazing collaborative cross-cultural endeavour. And we've worked together and shared and refined um, these workshops, uh, worksheets across four continents. Um, and I can't tell you how exciting that has been. It has been such a privilege for me to work on it with everyone. Thanks, Amy. Thank you, Maggie, for your time. Hi, I'm Sophie. I'm a volunteer for the Selective Mutism Association of China. Today, I will interview Junhua Reitman, co-author of the Selective Mutism Workbook for Parents and Professionals, Small Steps, Big Changes. Yes. Junhua is also the lead English to Chinese translator for several books about selective mutism, including the Selective Mutism Resource Manual. As a parent of a child who has overcome selective mutism, Junhua is a trained coach for parents of children with SM, leading an online support group for parents of children with SM, with more than 1,000 members worldwide. She is also the director of Sunny-Minded Selective Mutism Center in China. Hi, Jun. As a parent of a child with selective mutism, how did you use the Selective Mutism Resource Manual to help your daughter overcome the condition? Thank you, Sophie, for your introduction. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie, for your sharing and your thought and your effort working with you in the past two years is such an honor. It changed the way how I think about selective media, changed the way how I think about the work. And I see how professional work. It's a great experience, thank you. Um, my personal experience as, as a mom, I have to say selective media resource manual covered both the fundamental and the practical activity. I tried the, the strategy from the book while I was waiting for selective medicine um, therapist appointment, during the waiting time, the miracle happened. Within three months, my daughter Amy broke into two years silence and started talking to classmates outside the school. However, her teacher, her counselor, attending the seminar about the SM, uh, went to Amy's consultation, joined the online meeting, but she, she's still not talking in the kindergarten. So in the following year, I, be, I bring the book to the school and I demonstrate how I use the strategy, such as a commentary talk, such as a slide in. And Amy talking to me, talk to teacher right in, in that moment. And I think that's the wake up call for the teacher, uh, anyone who helping Amy, the book is wonderful. We need to just use, understand and use it. Um, so I, the moment the teacher, um, you know, they helping from the kindergarten, but really see the result in the first grade, just because many have page by page, page by page the information. Like Maggie said, you understand the beginning, you understand the middle, you understand the end. And when the, all the information together, Amy's there getting help. So starting to now talking to whisper, to talk. The moment she broke in silence in school, so rest the party is a history. So it's, she get a circle of friends. She have friends in school, she friend outside the school. She have starting to gain the life back. Um, I want to mention one thing about uh, Amy in the school improvement. The big dramatic, dramatic, it's not the parents, it's the teachers. So I have to say thank you for all the teachers, anyone who helping her. But the parents play the role, you have to understand, you know where your children stuck and step in. June, as a parent coach, you helped other parents using the Selective Mutism Resource Manual. Could you please share your experience using the manual? So as a parent's coach, that's I share my first-hand experience, how to use strategy, talking bridge, uh, triangle tic-tac, acting as go-between, 
rather than answer the question for the children. Two-way communication between home to school. I heard parents say, um, I don't get support. Um, no one understand. My question is, how about you? Do you understand? That's your, your lovely children. So step up. Be the parent who is advocate. And as a parent's coach, as the SM children's uh, mom, I have to say, I grew when my daughter on the journey of overcome SM. I feel so grateful to have children um, with her, grow up with her. Uh, I know it's a lot of pressure, um, but I'm, I'm sure um, at the end, everything go out beautifully. Jun, as the co-author of the new workbook, could you please share your experience with writing the workbook and also give some advice to parents and teachers on how to use the manual and the workbook to help children with selective mutism? Talking about the workbook, the workbook aim to lead the readers step by step, hold your hand throughout their journey in helping the children overcome SM with carefully picked essential strategy and activity for individual situation. That's the big difference. It's individual situation. The strategy step-by-step step already listed. When you saw the book, you're gonna say, uh, wow, that's what I'm gonna do in this situation. Uh, for example, use the bathroom. Um, when children have selective mutism, starting to intervention, before she's starting to talk, before she's starting to whisper, there's time period she still need help with the bathroom, with the lunch, with um, some made homework. Is anything that time she need help? Um, I know we helping them with uh, reduced anxiety, uh, helping them able to speak, but there's a very important part, helping them with their daily difficulty, daily challenge. Um, so in this book, in the beginning, first one we wrote it, Maggie, remember we wrote first one, go to the bathroom. I saw Maggie the, the step by step. I was thinking, how can, I don't know this part. If I know, it would be so much easier for my daughter recovery journey. Um, so after daily challenge, helping out and use a strategy activity, it is so much more effective. I have to say this way. Um, think of the information in the in the menu as the pores in the ocean. So the the diver need the skill, the diver need the equipment, the diver need the time to pick the pearl from the big ocean from all the important stuff and they use it. And in the meantime, if we think about the information in the workbook, it's a pearl already picked up by Maggie, already picked up by the the writers put on the plate. So go take it and use it. So the, it's quicker, more effective. But if you want to say what else in the ocean, go, go ahead. Manual doesn't go away. They still helping you have 700 pages of information, still helping you. But a quick go through the workbook. I would say hand by hand is good. Workbook first and the manual is the one support you. Um, especially when you go to school, you give the book, like uh, uh, give grandparents, it's quick. If some teacher want to learn more, I do see the teacher said, do you have more? I said, of course. I give you more information. Beginning, I give a few pages. Later, I give the book. Later, I have my notes. So some activity require additional game and a resource. The detailed information include appendix. So parents, teacher, grandparents, counselor, neighbors, friend. You can all have them immediately formulate, apply, and take action. So at the end of this interview, I want to address the intervention is most effective when coordinated between home, school, community setting. Whether you're the parents of the children with SM, our teacher, our treating professional, I really hoping this workbook will empower you to helping another children break free from silence. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie, June, and Amelia. 
I hope the new workbook along with the manual will help countless children worldwide overcome selective mutism.